Today on Seattle Refined. We just have like an, an all-star cast. A classic tale of showbiz drama that's a dream come true. What, we can be famous? Okay, cool, we can do that too. We visit the delightful local cast of Dream Girls. Plus, food so good it will turn you to a life of crime. They offer a shrimp bisque soup that I'd go out in the street and mug people just to have a taste. Of it. Refined visits one of Eastern Washington's most talked about eateries. <laughs> Then, it's a comedy phone call you are going to want to answer. Whatever Gillian wants me to do, I'm going to do it. Refine sits down with the stars of the new movie, Landline. Seattle Refine starts now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Seattle Refine. I'm Guard Swanson up on Capitol Hill. Every year, the Refine team looks forward to seeing great new movies at the Seattle International Film Festival. But this year, we got to give a special shout out to SIF. It's the gift that keeps on giving. One of our favorite movies from this year's festival is a really touching comedy called Landline, starring Jenny Slate. It's the story of two sisters whose relationship suddenly changes when they discover their father is having an affair. Refined managing editor Britt Thorson sat down with Slate, her co-star, and the film's director. Oh my God. Yeah, we're so dumb together. We double down. <laughs> Jenny Slate and director Gillian Robespierre clearly think the world of each other. Whatever it is, I'll do it. I don't care. I, <laughs> same thing. Like, yeah. I don't care. I don't care. Whatever Gillian wants me to do, I'm going to do it. Robespierre directed Slate in the 2014 indie comedy Obvious Child. What was it about the relationship that made you or the experience that made you think, like, we got to do this again? You know, she became one of my best friends in my life on that film. And so naturally, you want to see that person again if you have the added benefit of working with them, being creative. That's like the dream. So tell me about, uh, you know, everyone always says that like New York in and of itself is a character in every movie it's in. It's coupled with the fact that you chose the 1990s, tell me kind of about both of those decisions. Yeah, you know, so I grew up in the 90s yeah. in New York City, um, and I am nostalgic for that era, I, but we also wanted to get this device out of our story. Um, we wanted to try to tell a story about a family disconnecting and then coming together and connecting in the end. So as actors, what drew you two towards the script? Gillian writes um, honestly and in a really funny but rather pared down way. There's no like um, cheesy flourishes. It's, it's really, um, really easy to connect to what she writes. But to perform it, um, even though it's easy to read it and get it, to perform it, you have to be really honest. Do you guys have siblings? I mean, like, I'll, I have a sister, and this really, like, I mean, I, my parents went through a divorce as well, and I will tell you, nothing brought us closer together as siblings than our parents' issues. I have three siblings, and we definitely fought growing up. I think this was, like, a heightened version of that. This feels like me. New Yorkers fighting. <laughs> like, yeah, I guess New Yorkers yeah. are, like, tougher, like, yeah. yeah, I don't have this relationship with my sisters. Um, we are very gentle on each other and really always have been. Um, and Allie and Dana are not gentle on each other. They really, I can't believe some of the things yeah. they toss at each other. <laughs> In Landline, Jenny and Abby's parents are played by veteran actors Evie Falco and John Turturro. What was that like working with two of like the most well-respected actors in the game? I feel like we both had the same, like have spoken about having a similar reaction, which is just like, keep your head down, <laughs> be like very humble, do your work, be prepared, just like don't spook them. Don't like, I, I was like, I don't want them to know that <laughs> I am like, wa I'm like watching them because I'm studying them because they are like major acting gods. You guys have been on the festival circuit. What Was there anything specific about this movie that you kind of wanted to bring to Seattle? Seattle seems like a super 90s place to me. <laughs> like when I think of the 90s, I think of like girl Single. rock from Seattle. Like, Brunch. yeah, coffee becoming like a, a, a thing, yeah. a new thing. Yeah, why not? Thanks, Britt. Tonight, Sif rolls out the red carpet for a member of one of Hollywood's royal families. The festival is throwing a tribute to Oscar winner Angelica Houston. Sif will present Houston with an award for Outstanding Achievement in Acting and screen her new film, Trouble. Last time we checked, tickets were still available.
You're going home. In about two hours, the Seattle Center is going to be swarming with 30-somethings ready to turn back time with some of the hottest groups of the late 80s. Time was time. Time was the Tears will be shed, lighters will be lit, and swooning will commence tonight at 7.30 when New Kids on the Block, Paula Abdul, and Boys to Men take the stage at Key Arena. Half of our refined staff will be there. For more info, check out our website. One of the biggest musicals ever to grace Broadway and the silver screen is now making dreams come true right here in the Northwest. We are dreamers, boys, we'll make happy. The Tony and Oscar winning musical Dream Girls is playing right now at the Village Theater in Issaquah. If you don't know the story, you definitely know this number. And I After chatting with the show's talented cast, we are telling you we are going and you should too. Dream Girls is a powerhouse musical inspired by Motown, celebrating R&B in the 1960s with obvious parallels to Diana Ross and the Supremes. My father actually opened for The Temptations in the Motown Review, which is, uh, it was a traveling show, but Detroit being, that's where Motown started, it was a huge deal. So Diana Ross and the Supremes, every Motown act that was signed to the label at the time would do it. And studying for this show, one of the things I did do was call home and say, Dad, can you screenshot some pictures from back in the day? And we would talk about the temptations and get, I got firsthand stories about Motown. Um, so to, to do this show, and, and it's so closely parallel to the story and to the region, um, it gives me goosebumps. Angela Burchett is an East Coast actress originally from Detroit, taking the stage at Village Theater for the first time in her career. I have just really been blown away by the quality of the productions here. Angela shares the stage with three other fabulous performers who all have big shoes to fill with women like Beyonce and Jennifer Hudson starring in the very same roles. It can be intimidating, but at the same time, it's exciting. And, and so, <laughs> like, it's such good material to sink your teeth into and to be able to, to play with these women on stage and the rest of our cast. Um, we just have, like, an, an all-star cast where we're making the story real for us now. In a show packed with such intense and dramatic numbers, we wondered how the stars keep their energy sky high every night. The start of the show starts off with just four cowbells. <laughs> and as soon as I hear that boom, 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 I'm kind of like, oh, we're about to do Dream Girls. And so for that, that energizes me throughout every performance. And I know that it can be rough because I want to come out and do this huge big show mm -hmm. every time and then I'm like whoa voice mm -hmm. we have to make that last um, but it's so hard because we're we're surrounded by such talent for all four women they all agree every character learns hard lessons about love trust and what it takes to get to the top my favorite line in the show is Jimmy Early's line to Effie. And he says, um, the strong survive no matter where they're put. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is true for every character in this show. Dream Girls runs through July 2nd at the Village Theater in Issaquah before the show heads up north for a run at the theater's Everett location beginning July 7th. Seattle Refined is just getting started. Ice cream, anyone? You know, my brother's favorite flavor is, you know, lemon bar, and I've never been able to find that. Until now, that is. The story behind some of the best ice cream we have ever tasted. But first, a mouth-watering menu from east of the mountains. The banana foster, oh, that dessert. Oh, that's a guy to heaven. <laughs> and the gorgonzola fries. I dream about them. We sneak into the kitchen of a Spokane hotspot next. Welcome back to the show, I'm Gart Swanson. One of my favorite things about this time of year is having friends over on the porch and just kicking back with a summer cocktail. 
If you really want to impress your guests with some amazing but easy to make cocktails, check out the latest article from refined foodie extraordinaire Frank Wanko. Frank breaks down three summer cocktails literally anyone can make. To learn more, log on to the website and search for cocktail. When you're not kicking back on the porch, it's also a great time of year to explore the Northwest. And by explore, we mean find great new restaurants to dine at. Christy Gorenson from our friends at Washington Grown discovered a hot spot in Spokane that'll make your mouth water. First up today, we're off to the Down River Grill in Spokane. This casual fine dining restaurant is tucked in the Audubon neighborhood, making it a go-to spot for both locals and visitors. When we come here, which we come a lot, we see a lot of our friends and neighbors that are in the area. Whenever I have visitors that come, when I want to show them a great place to eat in Spokane, this is always yeah. where we go. And when it comes to the food, customers brag about that too. I've never had a bad meal. Yeah. It perfectly represents the best of Washington's foods, and I really think the best of American food. Their burgers are amazing. The banana foster, oh, that dessert. Oh, that's a guy to heaven. <laughs> and the gorgonzola fries. I dream about them. I really do. I sat down with owner Julie Norris and asked her what keeps customers coming back. Well, we do our best to really make people feel welcome, uh, but beyond that, the level of care that we have for the ingredients that we get and the food that we serve here is really what stands out among any other competition or any other restaurants in town. How would you describe the Down River Grill? It's casual fine dining, so you can come in flip-flops in the summer if you want. You can also come on your anniversary, you know, dressed in black tie if you'd like. You're gonna have the best plate of food that we can give you. You're gonna have the best service that we can give you. That's just kind of what we're about. Now we're hopping back into the kitchen with the executive chef to cook up a tasty dish. Well, we are now in the kitchen at Down River Grill and I'm with executive chef Tyler Gardner and we are gonna make up some delicious stuff today. We're gonna grill up a pork chop today. And we've got awesome Washington potatoes. We're gonna poach those in bacon fat and then finish that with some cream cheese, bacon, and chives. We start off with the pork chop. Here I have a, a cider brine. Um, so it's basically, yeah, it's a lot of sugar, a lot of, a lot of salt. What it's gonna do is moisturize the pork chop as we cook it and also give us some flavor. It's gonna rest there overnight, but now I have an overnight pork chop, so I'm just gonna yeah. take that out. So we're gonna do a little salt and pepper and throw that on there. The first thing I did is put it at 10 o'clock and then when it go into two o'clock, that's gonna give us our good lines that we're, that we're looking for. Well, that grills up, we're moving on to the potatoes. Put them in a pan so that way we can uh, submerge them in bacon fat and throw them into the oven. So if you can go ahead and pour that bacon fat in there and make sure all the potatoes are submerged. Then we cover the potatoes with some foil and throw them in the oven to cook for about an hour and a half. All right, now our potatoes are soft, so we're gonna throw them into the uh, KitchenAid bowl here. They smell really good. They do smell really good. We add in some cream cheese, chives, bacon, and half and half. More bacon. More bacon. I've seen the theme yep. here. <laughs> then we mix it all together, adding a little more bacon fat at the end. And now we plate. We start with our potatoes. Load Washington them up. potatoes here. Followed by our tri-colored carrots, our pork chop, and it's all topped with our brown butter sauce and some fried sage. I would say it's too pretty to eat, but not really. <laughs> That's so amazing. I gotta try all of it. I love the little bit of sweetness mm -hmm. in there. Mm. Okay. We're just gonna eat and grunt. <laughs> it's so amazing. Look for more stories from our friends at Washington Grown every Wednesday right here on Refined. Coming up, flying high. You don't have to jump out of a plane to get the thrill of skydiving. Welcome back to Refined. Since we've been on the air, we've made some pretty delicious discoveries, but this next story might top them all. It's about a local company called Sweet Low, and once you taste it, you'll know why it's flying off store shelves. Because the moment I tasted what homemade ice cream is, I was so appalled that we weren't all eating ice cream that tasted that, that this good. Lauren Wilson's love affair with homemade ice cream runs deep. She was instantly hooked four years ago in Vermont. I was working at a very small farm-to-table restaurant, uh, making desserts, and I happened to go downstairs. She had a little basement where she kept storage, and there was this really dinky 
ice cream maker. So I took it upstairs and I made butter pecan ice cream. And that second that I tasted what homemade ice cream is, my world, it shifted. And I left Vermont and moved back to Seattle and within a week I'd started my business. Lauren took a leap of faith and started Sweet Lowe's Ice Cream, catering to anyone with an unusual craving. I used Instagram heavily, so I would make a, a batch of ice cream and I would take a picture of it and people would email me um, with orders and to go to people's doors and they open it and they're so excited and I give them a hug. I mean, it's like this really awesome connection. How I grew my business, I, I focused on custom ice cream so people could reach out to me and say, you know, my brother's favorite flavor is you know, lemon bar, and I've never been able to find that. Will you make that for me? And I, and I was able to. I made a white cheddar ice cream, a Texas sheet cake ice cream, um, oatmeal cookie chunk. But demand is so high, Lauren had to think bigger. She's now working out of a commercial kitchen in Soto, thanks to her loyal ice cream fans. I started a GoFundMe, and within a month, I had raised close to 17 thousand dollars. It's very humbling to have people believe in me that much to to want to see me succeed. Lauren hopes Sweet Low Ice Cream will be on grocery store shelves soon, but promises to her supporters the recipe won't change. I think a lot of businesses are in it for money. They want to, you know, sell it, sell as much as they can. And obviously I, I want to make money too and be successful, but the taste is just, it's, it's unlike anything you can find. A lot of ice cream that you buy in the store is gonna have different types of gums in it. So my ice cream doesn't have any of that. So when I wholesale, I'm gonna wholesale about seven different flavors. But my ice cream subscription club will be awesome because it'll kind of bring me back to my roots in the sense that I'll be able to create different flavors each month. Seattle, get ready. It's gonna be a lot of ice cream headed their way soon. <laughs> to learn more about the Sweet Low story or how to get a pint or two, log on to seattlerefined.com. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Refined. Have you always wanted to skydive but afraid you'll hurl if you hurl yourself out of a plane? Well, Refine may have found the perfect happy medium. It's called I Fly, and we knew Refine's fearless Air Mayofsky was the perfect person to take the plunge. The thrill of indoor skydiving. I mean, seriously, check it out. The pros pull off wild maneuvers in a wind tunnel, and it's flat out mesmerizing. I had to know how it was done, so I headed to iFly Seattle in Tukwila to learn from one of the best in the biz. There is no other female in the world. Currently, no, there is not. Just myself. Kat Adam is the first and only female instructor on the planet. Talk about girl power. Generally, girls kick ass in the tunnel, so I think you're going to do awesome. As long as you don't overthink it too much, you're going to do great. This is my favorite thing about bringing families in is because moms usually fly better than everybody, and they end up loving it more than the kids. Of course, I was nervous, but Kat calmed my nerves. We say three to 103. Three to 103? As long as you're not wearing a diaper, you can fly. The older they get, the better they fly. And first things first, I got a quick training lesson. The only thing you need to remember today, and the more you hold still, the more you fly on your own. Okay. I suited up. A little oh, bit lower. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Then it was game time. These guys look so sleek and so professional that I'm just a smidge intimidated. I don't get intimidated often. I didn't do too bad, but I wanted the instructors, including Kat, to show me how it was really done. I may need a little more practice before I get that good, but I'm still flying high after my first iFly experience. For more deets on iFly, log on to our website. All right, that'll do it for today's show. I'm Gart Swanson. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you right here next time on Seattle Refined.